We are going to be walking through how to incorporate unit tests into a Flask application using the PyTest module. And so I'm going to be uploading all this stuff to GitHub so you guys can clone this repo and look through how it all works and I'll just walk through it right now. So uh, the very first thing I have here is a little template of a Flask application. And so basically I just have one file main.py and inside of this I'm importing the Flask module as well as uh, the Flask RESTful module so that I can create some APIs so we can send some test get and post requests to these uh, endpoints that we'll be creating. And so from here, um, what I'm gonna do just to run this guy is I'm going to right click and click on main. And so right now you can see that I have this thing running on port 80. So if I open up a new tab in uh, Chrome and I just go to localhost, you can see that it is returning me right now uh, some HTML that says hello world. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to uh, close that out. And then in addition to that, um, we have some uh, this thing I created called a demo API endpoint, and it's extending the resource uh, class from Flask RESTful. And so basically what it's doing is uh, you can call this one API endpoint either with a HTTP GET or an HTTP POST. And depending on how you are calling it, um, it will return something different. So um, when someone sends a GET request to this thing, um, it's gonna return this and we can uh, open up Postman right now just to see how this all works. So if I copy this, I'm gonna do a little, new little Postman thing. We're gonna basically send just a very simple GET there. I'm gonna click on send. You can see that um, our running web server right now is returning this. And then when I change this to a post request um, and I send that post request, um, we need to first go to body and change this to raw and say that we're gonna be posting some JSON and just do that. And then we'll send this thing. And you can see that it's telling us that we need to supply a name string inside of our JSON request. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And I'm gonna say my name is Vincent. And I'm going to send this and we can see that we're getting a little uh, response from this and if we changed our name to like John um, you can see that it's doing that as well so basically this is our running web server um, these are how we would be manually unit testing our endpoints sending these get requests and post requests but obviously when you want to make this more of a production environment you want to automate all these tests so that um, you know you can be a lot faster with uh, deployments and stuff like that so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to PyCharm and inside of my project directory, I'm going to create a new directory and I'm just going to call this the tests directory. And um, I'm going to create a new Python file in here. I'm going to call this test home route and we're going to open this guy up like that. And so basically um, what Flask has that's pretty awesome is this thing called the test client. Um, so I'm going to uh, say from main import app and I forgot to give this the Python file extension so give me one second. So from main import app, so we're importing that app object that was created in our main.py file and I'm going to define a new test. So define test underscore uh, home route and it's not going to take any arguments and um, I'm going to say that the response is app dot test client and we're going to be sending a get request specifically to that you know uh, forward slash endpoint basically that's the default endpoint that you hit when you send that get request like we did in our browser um, so we're going to send that and then um, i'm going to put a print statement right here just so we can see what the response looks like and then what i'm going to do is also call this test home route method just like that and i'm going to debug this file and you can see that uh, in PyCharm, it is telling us that, you know, we're getting this 200 response, which is great. That's what we expect. Um, and then if you also scroll through this a little bit, um, you can see that inside of this, um, there is like data and it's in uh, bytes uh, object or um, data type. And so basically uh, what you can do inside of uh, your, with PyTest is to say things like assert and response that status code is 200. Another thing we can say is we want to assert that you know when I send a get request to this you know to my home route, I want to make sure that it includes this um, you know this piece of data. So I'm just going to copy its value, and I'm going to say response dot uh, data, 
And the way you do this is actually more like that. So we're just gonna make these assertions. I'm going to close this out and I'm going to uh, just run this again. I'll comment out uh, this bottom line right here. But the way you run PyTest, so we've just defined this uh, new unit test to check our home route on our web app. Um, as I'm going to go to the terminal here inside of PyCharm, and then I'm going to just run this command python 3 m pytest from inside of my project directory. And you can see right here that this test is passing. Now, let's say that uh, someone came into main.py and they made some breaking code change. So if you were to go in here and change this from saying like, hello world, you said like, you know, misspell world. Um, and then, you know, if someone was to rerun these things, you can see that it's now failing because it's not seeing what it was expecting to see in its response. So um, just like that, um, we're using PyTest to make sure that the Flask app is returning the expected HTML or string that we wanted to um, through this, uh, through PyTest. So that's pretty awesome. The next thing we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be defining a new file and I'm gonna call this test uh, demo API. So we're basically testing our, our little API. And again, I forgot to give it the uh, PY extension. So give me one second on that. And so basically, again, with this guy, um, we have different types of testing that we can do here. Um, and specifically, what I want to be doing is I want to be making sure that um, when I send a get request to that API, I'm getting the response. And I also need to construct a JSON payload to post something to the same API endpoint to make sure that I'm getting the expected response from that as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is same stuff we were doing earlier. We're going to say from main import app, and then we're going to define a new test, test get API uh, endpoint. And we're going to um, now use the with keyword in Python because we're going to be essentially creating like a, a temporary uh, connection to our little test clients or test client. And I'm going to say as C. And so basically once your test is finishing, it just closes that connection so that um, you know, it, you're saving resources on your computer. Uh, but basically the next thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to say response gets and uh, we'll say c dot get so we're sending that get request and now we need to uh, specify what is the path to that api endpoint so if i go back to main.py and we scroll down here we can see that um, the api endpoint lives at this path so i'm just going to copy that paste that right in there and um, what i'm going to do uh, again is i'm going to say that the uh, json version of this response would be equivalent to uh, response.getjson. So that's something, again, pretty cool about this test uh, module. Um, and then I'm just gonna print it before we assert anything here so we can see what is actually going on. So I'm gonna debug this guy. And we can see that um, we're getting that 200 status code, which is great. And we can also see uh, what the JSON response itself is. And so, you know, assuming your JSON is like the static thing, what I can do is I can just copy the value of this dictionary and I can just say assert JSON response is you know the exact dictionary that we're expecting to get back and I can also do the same thing we were doing for our home route and I can just say assert response dot status code is equal to 200 and so just like that I'm testing the get uh, API endpoint or I'm testing the get uh, requests for this API endpoint, which is great. And now what I also want to do is a little bit more sophisticated. So we're going to be posting something now. So we have to construct a JSON payload to then post. And then we want to make sure that we're getting what we expect back from that JSON payload. So I'm going to say def test post API endpoint, close that guy off. And then again, very similar to what we were doing right up here. Um, we're just going to be saying that and then we're going to say response uh, is c dot post and this is where again you need to supply the path that you're going to be posting to so i'm going to put in something right here post in the path and then the other really cool thing here um, with the test client method uh, that flask gives us is that we can pass in the json directly so we're just going to put in this json and specifically, you know, if we recall correctly, 
Um, we were expecting a name field inside of this JSON, and I'll just put in another name. Let's be a little bit more uh, clever here and go with Sally. Why not? Um, and so from there, I'm going to, uh, again, uh, get the JSON response. Response.getJSON. And I'll just do another print. Put a breakpoint here. Run this in debug mode. And we can see that um, you know we're getting uh, the expected JSON response after we've posted uh, the specific JSON to that API endpoint. So again, to finish off my unit test here for the um, for this API endpoint, I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to say assert JSON response equals equals that. Um, so we're going to ensure that's happening. And we're also going to want to assert that our response uh, has that 200 status code to make it sure that it was successful. So um, I'm going to close this off. I'm going to leave that. Um, and now again, um, you know, let's say we, so we've now successfully created our unit tests. And then the way to run this is um, inside of the terminal, I'm just going to clear this. Um, what we would do uh, to actually run this, let's say you just made a code change, is again, you just run that command python dash three pytest, and you can see that it's running all these things successfully, which is great. Um, something I would say if I was doing a little code review on this also is that you know we might wanna break apart the um, posting from the getting uh, for that API endpoint, so we might create like a separate Python file just to make it a little bit more uh, clear on everything that's happening. But you know, if you know someone did come in here and did a breaking code change, like instead of saying "nice to meet you," um, you know, they said "great to meet you," and that's not going to match up with what our test condition is. Um, if someone just came in here and did that, and I rerun this thing, you can see that. Um, it's giving us some pretty nice feedback in terms of why our testing just failed. So um, that is going to wrap things up for how you are able to uh, run unit tests in your Flask application using the test client that Flask supplies to us. And I think it's pretty great stuff. You don't have to spin up an entire uh, you know, web server to do this either. Uh, the really cool thing here is that um, you know, I don't even have anything running on localhost if I go here and I just... I'm gonna stop everything. You know what I what I really like about this is the fact that um, you know we are able to run this even though my web server itself isn't actually serving anything. So if I refresh this page, you can see that you know it's it's not online, um, but we're still getting uh, our ability to do unit tests very quickly. So thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and be well.